Hi everyone, it's Dr. A, and in this video, we'll be discussing arthrokinematic movements. And to help provide a better understanding of these types of movements, we'll define and explore what's referred to as the convex-concave principle or the concave-convex principle. Now, as we explore and discuss joint movement together, one of the things that's important to keep in mind is that we have two primary types osteokinematic and arthrokinematic movements. And quite notably, one of these gets more attention than the other. Take The Rock, for example. Many folks know of him from his days in wrestling or because of the number of films he starred in. And as a result, you could say that he's a box office draw. And what comes with that is a great deal of attention. The same can be said about our body's osteokinematic movements they garner a great deal of attention too. And this includes actions like flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, rotation, etc. But perhaps what we fail to recognize is that in order for these movements to take place, we need to have supporting movements. For example, take The Rock's cousin, who's also his stunt double. Just like you would expect a stunt double to do, he does a great deal of the behind the scenes or grunt work in these films, but The Rock gets all the credit. And this is analogous to the relationship that exists between our osteokinematic and arthrokinematic movements. As we'll see and discuss in more detail, these movements include spin, roll, and glide. And without them, our osteokinematic movements would be severely impaired and couldn't be the star of the show. So now that you're aware of the three primary types of arthrokinematic movements, let's discuss the image you see on your screen. On the top row, we have a description of those movements, spin, roll, which is sometimes referred to as rock, and glide, which is sometimes referred to as slide. Now, you'll also notice that above this first row, we have the title Convex on Concave. And what this represents is the manner in which a joint may be arranged to produce arthrokinematic movements. So specifically, what we're saying is that we can have the convex segment be the one in motion while the concave structure is relatively stationary. So in a nutshell, we may see the convex structure spin, roll or rock, and then either glide or slide on the concave surface. Now, let's move down to our second row. Here, we again have the manner in which a joint may be arranged to produce arthrokinematic movements. They are the same spin, roll, and glide movements we referred to earlier. However, what's being shown is that the concave structure is the one in motion, while the convex structure remains relatively stationary. So in summary, it's the small movements of spin, roll, and glide that make our larger joint movements such as flexion, extension, adduction, and abduction possible. But let's delve into some examples so that we can make better sense of this. The content we just reviewed can sometimes be summarized into two rules. The first rule is the convex-concave rule, so let's start there. This rule first begins with us identifying a given joint to consider. So for this example, let's select the glenohumeral joint, more commonly referred to as the shoulder joint, which is pictured on the right side of your screen. Now that we've selected a joint, we need to identify the initial or start position of that joint. So let's consider that we have someone in a standing position and their right shoulder is presented to you the way it is here. Next, we've got to identify which portion is concave and which is convex. Now, to help us better understand these terms, it's helpful to note that concave means that the surface of a given structure has an inward curve. And the term convex means to have a rounded or circular structural component. Now, what do you notice about the structure of the glenoid cavity? Would you say it's convex or concave? If you said concave, you'd be correct. And what about the humeral head? We'd say it's convex. Next, we need to consider the joint action we want to investigate. 
So let's imagine we'd like to investigate shoulder abduction. On the created image here to the left, we have our humerus with our convex humeral head and our glenoid cavity, which is concave in nature. Now, in order for shoulder abduction to occur, we need to see the humerus curve up and outward, as noted by this arrow. So, in order for abduction to occur, we have the convex structure in motion, while the concave structure is relatively stationary. And when this is the case, we should note that the orthokinematic movements of rolling and sliding occur in opposite directions. So the rolling motion occurs up and out, as we noted a moment ago, and as a result, the sliding motion will occur in the opposite direction, which would be down and in. Let's now take a look at the concave convex rule. And as we did in the last example, let's go through our prompts. First, we need to consider a joint of interest. And for this example, we'll pick the elbow as shown here on the right. Next, let's consider the initial position of the joint. And for this example, let's say that we find the elbow joint in the position shown here. Now we'll need to identify which structure is concave and which is convex. So utilizing our image on the right, let's identify whether or not the olecranon fossa is concave or convex. What are your thoughts? If you said concave, you'd be correct. So let's now take a look at the trochlea of the humerus. We'd say it is convex. So let's now go to our image on the left-hand side. We can label these components just as we've done on the image to the right. Now, let's consider the motion we want to investigate. And for this example, let's take a look at elbow flexion. Now, in order for elbow flexion to occur, we need to have the concave structure move upward on the convex, as indicated by this arrow. And as a result, this movement is subject to the concave convex rule. So here, when a concave structure moves on a convex one, the roll and slide orthokinematic movements occur in the same direction. So the rolling motion occurs in an upward direction, as we noted a moment ago, and because the concave convex rule applies, the sliding motion occurs in the same direction.